YouTube, how you doing? I am Photo Kevy, and this is Lightroom 5. And today, what are we talking about? We're talking about everything. Basically, just going through a quick run through of Lightroom itself, how to use it, what to use it for, uh, why you should be using it potentially, and then just kind of going from there and just go through that whole process. And so, uh, what I have open right now is actually just a, a Lightroom catalog that I have created. Um, I mean, it's it's nothing special. I mean, you can literally just go up and click on new catalog and Lightroom will actually open up a, a catalog and you name it and do all that cool stuff. And, um, and then, you know, essentially from there, it's, you know, that catalog. And, um, but one of the things that I like to do, uh, with my Lightroom workflow is essentially, uh, create a sort of like a default Lightroom catalog and, um, it, you know, put, put collections in there that, that I know I'm going to be using and, and use that for a particular event that, um, you know, that I'm working on. And so, uh, you know, just kind of for, for right now, this, this particular Lightroom catalog, uh, what we'll do is just kind of just go over. Uh, the stuff that, that, you know, people might want to learn about. And uh, so uh, here in the default library uh, section of Lightroom, uh, you have your folders section, which, you know, I don't have any images in this particular Lightroom catalog right now. And so the folder section is actually empty. And, uh, you know, what the folder section is used for is, is really just kind of like a, it's a roadmap. It tells you what files are, uh, the status of each file. If it's, if it's online or offline, um, if that, if that file's gone missing, uh, the other thing it's really good for is, is actually, uh, if you need to move files from one location to another, um, it's, it's kind of cool to, you know, uh, be able to, to take images and, and create a subfolder for those images and then throw all those in there. Um, you know, especially if they're, you know, specific selected images that you want to, that you want to work on and, and keep separate from just kind of all of the images. Uh, and then you have your collection section and in here, um, this is more like a, a way of filtering your images. Uh, you know, you can, you can do stuff where you have your, your original images that you imported. And then from there, uh, you can create a collection for your like initial call and then you can just filter down to those images and uh, we'll get it get into that a little bit more um, once we actually import images uh, then you have the develop module this is where you do all of your editing and um, or most of your editing you actually do editing uh, in the quick develop here uh, you know if you have certain sets of images uh, selected you actually hit these different buttons and actually have them do stuff to your images uh, but in the develop module uh, this is where you actually would do more of the refined editing um, you can see that each slider has a position that it starts from uh, whereas in the library module if you hit just hit like any of these buttons in the quick develop it's um, it's just gonna add you know or take away it doesn't really have a lot of control like in here I could actually give a specific number for temperature or I could give it, uh, you know, I could bump up the exposure or do anything like that. Um, the rest of the stuff, uh, you can kind of figure out on your own, uh, the stuff that I don't really use for the type of stuff that I do. And, um, I'm sure there's a lot of cool things in here that are useful. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're just kind of talking about general Lightroom going from, uh, you know, creating a Lightroom catalog or, or opening a Lightroom catalog, importing the images, getting to editing on them, and then exporting them out. So uh, for, for this particular video, we're just gonna really focus on library and develop. You have your tone curve palette. Uh, this is kind of for your tonal ranges of your images. It has nothing really to do with color. Uh, you're just really dealing with your highlights, lights, darks, shadows. And then obviously your tone curve, your S curve, as they like to call it, uh, that's your contrast in your image. If you want a lot of contrast or a little bit of contrast, you can actually do all that in the tone curve. Uh, and then you have your HSL, which we've been talking about uh, in the last couple of videos. Uh, split toning, uh, detail has to do with uh, you know your, the sharpness and noise reduction. And uh, Lightroom 5 actually does a really good job with noise reduction now. Um, versus like previous versions, there was other software out there that was actually better. Uh, lens correction, this actually is really helpful. Um, you know, it corrects stuff to your images based on, um, you know, uh, distortion. So if you shot with a really wide angle lens and uh, stuff on the fringe kind of looks a little bit like it's curved too much, uh, it, it has a lot of pre-stuff uh, built in uh, and it'll recognize the lenses that you use for your cameras and give the adjustment. And then you can actually go in and, and do further adjustments to the actual lens 
Um, and then you have some effects here for doing uh, vignettes and adding grain. Um, uh, you can go positive or negative for the vignette, and it's kind of cool. And then uh, camera cal calibration. Uh, in here, there's uh, presets that you can run um, that are camera profile specific. So kind of like when you're shooting uh, with your camera and you go into the menu and, and do stuff with uh, picture styles where you can, uh, you know, choose portrait, landscape, uh, black and white, or monochrome, um, or you can have your own user presets. Well, those, when you're doing that uh, in the sense of shooting raw, which is how I shoot, uh, they're not really uh, baking those into the images. And you'll notice uh, if you ever shoot and have those presets set up on your camera, like say you had monochrome set up and you shot raw, once you import it into uh, Lightroom, Lightroom just disregards that uh, profile setup and uh, and then just re, um, reapplies whatever profile you have available, whether it's uh, it's Adobe Camera Raw or Adobe Color Space, or, or sorry, Adobe RGB, um, or any of the other kind of like standard um, type of camera profiles that you might find for like a Canon camera. So there's like uh, neutral, there's landscape, portrait, um, standard, you know, is one of the other ones. So um, in here, you can kind of tweak all those and, you know, sort of set up a, a more of a universal look to your images. Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, it's not something that I typically uh, delve too far into unless I really need to do something to the images that is totally wrong. Um, this is a good area to kind of start on an image and, and do some heavy tweaking. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of like the, the main palettes within the develop module that are utilized. Uh, and then you have over on the left hand side here, you have your presets uh, palette. And in here, you kind of set everything up um, as presets. So you can select a set of images, run a preset, it'll make it look like those images. And then you just have to go into like the basic and just kind of tweak them just to, you know, so they're more image specific. Um, but yeah, these are good for setting stuff up and building a preset that you're going to run, you know, all the time to kind of get your images to look a certain way, uh, right from the get go, especially if you're a, a decent photographer and, and can kind of shoot the same way, uh, regardless of the environment that you're shooting in or the time of day, uh, the presets are really helpful for, you know, speed of editing and stuff like that. Uh, snapshots, uh, this is actually really useful for, uh, if you need to see kind of multiple versions or progression of an image, uh, that you've done some editing on, uh, you can actually go through and, uh, build a snapshot of it. And, uh, so if you, you know, wanted to see what it looked like in black and white, you could do all the editing for black and white and then set a snapshot for that and then reset the image and then re-edit it to something completely different. And then you'd have two versions of that that you could switch between, uh, History, uh, it's essentially everything that you've done to the image uh, will show up here. Any slider that you've adjusted, uh, the history will show that. Uh, and then you have a quick uh, access to your collection. So if you were working on a certain set of images and then you needed to switch over to another set, uh, you have the capabilities to do that uh, within here without having to switch back to your library, then choose that collection and then go back into develop. So that's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in here and let's actually import some images uh, there's a couple ways that you can actually import images. You can hit the import button, um, which is one way to do it. The other way that I like to do it is if I know that I'm going to be editing a certain set of images and I've already kind of organized them into a folder from my camera, uh, I just click and drag and drop onto uh, Lightroom. And one of the other things that you can actually do is if you know that you only need a certain set of the, the images, like I can actually go through and uh, choose sets of images here and um, say I only just wanted to randomly select the images and import just those. I can actually do that and they'll show up with just those check marks, which I think is kind of cool, uh, especially if you know it's like, oh, every other image is the, are the images that I need to import. Um, you can actually do that and then it's already set up uh, and you can kind of work that way. Um, for what we're doing here, um, we have the images, we transferred them to our computer uh, from our camera. Now we're going to now import them into a Lightroom catalog. And so this is kind of where it's a little bit different if you compare it to something like Bridge, if, you're, if you grew up using Bridge. Um, the mindset of Bridge is essentially, it's like a finder window um, or a file browser window like on a PC. And uh, all your images are there 
and um, and this is where Lightroom is actually different. Uh, Lightroom, you uh, if you have a, a catalog that you're going to use, you actually need to bring those images into that catalog to then work on them. Uh, so then it's kind of like think it, think of it more like you're going to work on the files in Photoshop. You know, so you're you're in Bridge. And now you're going to work on those images and you need to edit those images. So then you're going to then open them up into uh, Photoshop. And so like with Lightroom, what you're doing is you're importing them. And that's kind of like the opening sequence of, you know, going to start editing them in Photoshop. Uh, a couple of things that I like to do. Um, uh, if, if you need to work offline, uh, build smart previews, and then uh, if you had your images on like an external hard drive and you didn't want to bring that with you, you could actually just do um, uh, build smart previews and then all you need is the Lightroom catalog and the, the, the two other files, the previews file and the, and the smart previews file. And then you can actually edit those images uh, working off of what's a, called a smart preview. And really it's just a, a glorified DNG, a reduced sized DNG file uh, that's baked into a, a, a smart previews file a dot lr data file and uh and then you're actually editing that image that's referencing the raw images once you reconnect that hard drive um that has all your raw images on there and a couple other things that you can do you can uh you can add keywords to all your images uh before you import them so if you're always going to use certain uh keywords you know where you uh, you have your photography business name on there uh you can go ahead and edit there that in there you know i could always have my keywords be you know my name and then um, you know, or if it was, uh, if it was, you know, for this particular one, there's lacrosse and then, you know, I could do photo heavy and I could do, you know, it's in San Diego and, uh, you know, so you can actually set those keywords as you're importing the images, which is really cool. Um, you can also, uh, add specific presets. Like, so like we were talking about a little bit ago, if you had your own presets, you could actually, um, use those, uh, presets before you even import the images, save yourself a step. Um, uh, and same with the uh, you know stuff with metadata, you know like I said, keywords is is one part of that, but there's uh, additional metadata. Uh, you can give file location, you can change the the date and time that stuff happened. Uh, you can do all that kind of, uh, you can build a preset and and do that. Uh, but what we're gonna do right now is we're actually just gonna import the images and let Lightroom do its thing. So we're gonna import about 300 images that I shot uh, a couple days ago. However you like to call your images, you know, if you if you need to, you know, one star them or color label them, you know, one star, if you hit one, uh, the star will show up there. Uh, if you need to use color labels, you got six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, we'll all give it different color labels. And you actually see it added a, a blue label there. Uh, if I change it to, if I hit the eight key, it's going to give me green, yellow for seven, six for red. Uh, zero will take off the rating and then uh you know if there was like a there's like a three star on there uh, i could take the rating off um and then if you know you didn't need a color label on there you could easily do that um so uh as you can see i have a smart preview already set up that uh each time i star something you'll see that this uh collection start to grow and so really what that's doing uh the way a smart collection works is you're you're setting a rule up for that smart collection to function and so if we actually go into this one and edit smart collection we can actually see what the rule is um, so i have a smart collection named picks uh it's matching you know all of these rules i mean you can set it for all any or none and then um you can choose uh you have all these different things that you can choose from you have searchable text field uh you can go by uh color space uh size of the image um, if it's been developed, you know, if the, if it has adjustments, um, if there's a, if there's a treatment applied to it, if there's a crop, uh, you have all these different options that you can really choose from. And, you know, for, for this particular smart collection, I just have it set for rating and is either greater than or equal to one. And, uh, so the, the cool thing with that is I'm able to, uh, do some culling on my, um, on my images here and really just, you know, go through and pick the images that I need and uh and they filter in here so you know i'm not just working in the all photograph section uh looking through 300 photos each time i open this uh particular lightroom catalog up and uh so what i can do is just quickly highlight that uh collection and boom there you go i have the five images that i just uh that i needed to keep for this particular shoot uh, that's not the case uh in in reality but you know I'll just just show you guys real quick how how you're able to to do something like that um and then if we uh, switch over to develop module and check this out, uh, so now we have access to 
you know, all of our different uh, editing modules here, editing palettes. And uh, you can see here the history, the, uh, all that's happened so far is um, there's been an import on it. And uh, so if we, if we kind of make the adjustments here and, um, you know, kind of go through here and just do some quick edits on this, kind of make it like nice and orangey, warm, super warm, super contrast. Yeah, because everybody loves contrast. And it's a little green, so we'll just we'll go crazy on the magenta. Um, uh, but in the end, I think it looks better as a black and white image here. And so there you go. So I mean, that's just a, a quick rundown of you know kind of how Lightroom works. Um, the, one of the other things that that I like to do for my workflow of things is um, once the images are all imported, is I'll actually highlight the images library and then uh rename the photos and we'll change this to actually be something that makes sense so we'll call it uh they're playing lacrosse so we'll go with lacrosse and we'll give it a date or a year you know and then uh sequence number uh this is just like a, a pre thing as far as uh, a preset and uh, you can choose them down here. Uh, this is kind of just like the, the renaming palette um, or the dialog box. And uh, you can choose things that you want to put in there. And then you hit insert and then it shows up here. And, um, and then it gives you the example of what it's going to end up looking like. So I could throw in it. I could throw in a year in there. Uh, I could throw in the dimensions. And, you know, as you can see, like the name starts to get really long. And uh, so what you can do is actually just delete it. So this is just kind of like the dance floor for the things that you want to include in that. And then you can actually go within each one of these little modules and determine uh, you know, what it's gonna actually look like. And uh, the other thing that you can do is um, you can actually include text. And so the text part is always gonna be the same. Uh, you need things like these, um, these modifiers that'll actually import or create the unique ID for each of those images. So right now I have it set for, you know, uh, it's gonna be a, a four digit number since I have 300 uh, images, you know, it's a three digit number. So I just want that extra zero. So everything kind of remains all nice and neat, uh, regardless if I'm in, you know, Finder or if I'm in Lightroom, uh, it'll all look the, the same. And then so you just hit, click done and then uh, this is the part where you actually commit to it uh, I can have it start at a higher number um, or I can have it start at one and so I'm just gonna have it start at one and uh, the good thing about naming your images um, uniquely is in case there's a, a catastrophic failure on your drive uh, you're not gonna have just a bunch of IMG uh, 3365 CR2 files on your computer um, you know from different shoots that you've done throughout the year you will actually have unique names for each and uh, shoot that you've done and so uh, that's one of the things I like to do right when I uh, import the images uh, some of you other people might use um, uh, photo mechanic which is is a great program for doing culling for especially for those wedding photographers that like to shoot a lot of images and uh, have to you know cull through that and then they do a rename right then uh, that's a good way of doing it uh, mine happens on uh, after the import and uh, and that's where I'll do the rename and uh, and make sure all these images uh, that I've that I've worked on have you know been renamed and if I switch back to the source you can see uh, you know they've already been changed Lightroom has already changed the files and so these images here that are located on you know just my hard drive right now but you know in a on an external drive sense of things you know I'd have my external drive and then they would be in a you know in a images for the for that year and then you know whether it's like a portrait or an event or or you know wedding or, or something like that I'll have those you know folders and then so when you switch over and look inside the the folder section you can actually see you know it's my Macintosh hard drive and then you know the folder name was uh, Lightroom video so those images were there and so that's actually where Lightroom is looking for those images so if I were to just completely delete those images off of my hard drive uh, and you know open up this catalog all I would get were these preview files uh, and no images to actually edit and so the images would be offline and so that's a, a lot of you know beginner mistakes that that end up happening is people think once I've imported into this Lightroom catalog that's where the images live but actually it's the other way um, once you import the images they're still on your hard drive you're really just editing uh, references of those files and so nothing actually is applied to those images until you actually run an export and um, 
So like you see this image right here, 001, uh, if we switch over to Finder uh, and uh, and then go to desktop here, I think it's on here, RCs, yeah. So, uh, so if we go to 001, you can see in Lightroom it's black and white, but um, the actual image is is in color still and it's actually still you know um still looks like it's out of camera as well uh, there's no contrast there's it's slightly green uh, you know all that stuff so as you can see you know the image right here in lightroom is black and white the one in finder is still in color and that's you know that's a good idea of of what it means to have a reference file um or you know that lightroom is a reference uh, image referencing program and uh, so it's not until I actually export this as something, whether it's a TIFF, PSD, you know, DNG, uh, any of those file types, they'll actually show up uh, with the edits. So um, something to keep in mind, don't actually delete your raw images um, unless you know you're not going to use them anymore. Um, you know, if you if you have any images that you might have shot that were completely blown out or or the flash didn't fire, so they're completely black and there's no way to recover them. You know, those images you'd probably want to get rid of. Um, and here's a good example of what I was talking about where um, you might have images that are, you know, were shot with the monochrome setting on your camera, but once it actually loads in, uh, you'll see that um, what will end up happening is it'll actually switch to color here in a second. Just letting the, the program catch up here. There you go. So it's actually set to Adobe Standard, and you can see uh, these ones haven't been processed, but uh, it still kind of retains that. Um, that uh, picture setting that was set up in the camera, uh, but it's actually not going to be sticking like this. So, uh, which is not a bad thing. It, I use that uh, particular setting when I'm shooting raw, um, you know, just to make sure I have exposure set properly, and um, you know, I'm able to get as much detail in the images, and I can get a get a preview of what the file is going to look like when I actually do convert it to black and white, and then start doing my editing on top of that. So, um, if I create a collection here. That's uh, not smart collection. Uh, this type of collection that's different is uh, what you're doing with a collection is you can actually um, drag and drop images. So some people that go through their images, they just like to drag them in and, um, and you just drag them in. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people make when they're first starting with Lightroom is once they have all the images selected, they actually pull from you know, on the border of the of the the image, and what that does in grid view is it actually just makes you select that in one image. So when you're actually doing a, a selection of images, um, and then you're gonna drag them anywhere, uh, you actually want to hover over the or you want to mouse make sure your mouse is actually on the image, and then w click to get the stack of images, and then you actually drag them in to the smart collection. And uh, so that's you know kind of. Uh, the difference between a smart collection, which will uh, be based on a rule. So if I actually were to star these, and uh, so all of those eight images will actually show up in here. And uh, so that's kind of the difference. The smart collections allow you to just uh, build a uh, build a rule and then have it, uh, you know, those images show up in that collection. So if I were to get rid of these, you know, the opposite is going to happen. They're going to get uh, removed from that smart collection. And then we're just left with the five that still have their star label. Uh, but the cool thing with a uh, regular collection that, that you just drag in, um, you know, I can put whatever I want on here. I can red label them. You know, I could, uh, I could, f you know, even flag the image. And, you know, these won't show up in a smart collection unless there's a rule built for it. And uh, so that's another way of being able to filter within uh, a collection is, you know, once you have all your images highlighted and, and color labeled and flagged, you can actually use the filter to filter these images. So if I just wanted to see, you know, just red images, that's what would show up based on the collection that I'm in. So if I was, at, you know, in the, the all collection and say I had, you know, all of these various images here, just random images, say I had all those set for, for red, and um, and I wanted to just see the red images, so I could just see those red images. Um, so that's a quick way of filtering. And then once I once I have all these these red images uh, located, um, I can then create a a collection just for red images, or I can actually just you know make a smart collection and have Lightroom do it for me. 
you know, just call it red labeled. Uh, we'll go label color is red. Click create. And then what you see is these four images will show up right in that collection. And so now I have a quick way of filtering, you know, maybe these uh, red labels represent action shots, you know, and then I have another one that's all detail shots. And then, um, you know, so you, that way you can kind of go through and make sure all the edited images based on that particular section match or, or look similar, you know, or if I needed to create a, a just a black and white uh, smart collection, I can actually do that based on um, based on edited type. Where is that at? Develop uh, treatment. And then black and white, boom, right there. And I can actually make a smart collection based on black and white. Oops, BQ, same, same difference. BQ, BW, it's all the same. Uh, here, we'll re rename that there. So black and white. So then, as you can see, I already color treated two images during this uh, tutorial. And as you can see, uh, those images show up right away. And there's a collection built for that. And uh, so one of the things uh, that... I also learned early on when I was uh, working with uh, with Lightroom catalogs is uh, or with collections is if an image is in uh, two different spots. So like this black and white image right here, um, it's also in my pick section right here. Um, if I were to change this image here to something else, like if I were to actually get rid of the star label or do a different type of edit that's not black and white. Um, it will show up in the in the other image. So um, let's say I crop this one and I want the other one to be full size. So if I go into do a quick crop on this and um, what you'll end up seeing here is actually um, so I just cropped it. You can tell it's cropped and uh, switch back to grid view. So if I go back to the black and white one, it's also cropped. And so uh, that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. If you wanted two different versions of it, uh, the best way to do that is actually create a virtual copy. And so that virtual copy will um, show up there. You can see that we have 318. And um, so there's the, there's the other copy. And um, what you can do with that other copy now is actually, um, let's go here and let's remove Let's remove this here. Bloop. There we go. So now we have two versions, one cropped, one uncropped. And um, so we'll switch back to the grid view. Take a look at that. And you can see here, I have a crop version and I have a full version. And actually, uh, I also wanted the full version to be in color. So now we have that. And we switch back to the grid view. You can see that. So now we have a cropped black and white version. And then a virtual copy, which is the, referencing the same image. Uh, but in Lightroom, the cool thing is it's actually showing me uh, two different versions. So that way, if I needed to, I could have a black and white set and I could have a color set. And uh, so, yeah, uh, any questions coming up, just, uh, you know, send them, write them in the comments. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and I'll be posting more videos. And don't forget to like this one. YouTube, this is Photo Kevy, and I'll see you later.